Welcome to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN Network. Come join us as we study the Word of God together. Go get your Bible and let's see what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. Praise God. We thank God today. Amen. So let's get ready to worship God. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Walker True Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the Walker True Radio Network. We want to welcome those who are listening around the world. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us what? Rejoice and pray. And we thank God that you are listening. We hope that you hear something that will encourage you, inspire you, and ask the question that you should be asking. What must I do to be saved? So we're going to get started with scripture and prayer from our own brother Steve. Amen? Amen. 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 Good morning. How's everyone Good morning. doing? Good morning. Good morning. So in uh, men's meeting and just in general as a church, we've been talking about getting out, reaching the lost, doing some street evangelism. So I picked a verse that pertains to that. The verse we got is from Matthew chapter 4, starting at 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right, let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you that we can meet in this place to come to worship your name, Lord, and to glorify you. We thank you for all the blessings that you bring us as a church, Lord, and for all that you continue to do for us. I pray that you will be with the speaker today, Lord, that we will hear a word from you. I pray that we will continue to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I know some of you ladies, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate the men. Hey, this is a very loving church. I, I, I couldn't imagine being nowhere else. Praise God. Amen. Well, I want to speak about afraid, being afraid. Well, come on. We so full of afraidness, we just don't want to even leave a job that's using us so bad. Mm -mm. That's only pertaining to them and not us. Mm -hmm. Which things keep us from things we want to do, like be amongst my family. You know, be amongst my church family. I mean to say that like that. Because my family at home, they always with me, church and at home. So anyway, we shouldn't be afraid to go out there and just go out there on faith. And I'm going to tell you about faith, first of all. I really never really thought about faith and really never put myself out there to say, yeah, I have faith in the Lord. But I'm going to be trying a new adventure that I'm just going to go out there, on, step out there on faith that I never had before. Amen. I'm so excited and pumped because guess what? That's going to let me spend more time with y'all. Amen. 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 We, was we was partying for Jesus, right? Amen. Like, it felt good just pumping it up like, hey, woo, woo. But you know what? I love the Lord. I love y'all. I'm going to spend more time. But first of all, we mustn't be afraid to just step out there on faith. We mustn't be afraid to let God use us. We must not be afraid to go out there and talk to those in need. Did God give us the word to say to somebody? Say it Amen. in love and kindness. Don't, and we need to stop being afraid to pray for somebody right then and there and not just say, I'm praying for you. We need to stop and take that time, hold a hand and pray for them. Because they might need that right then and there Amen. instead of waiting for somebody to get a prayer. Like me, I've been going through a lot. But I know this is a praying congregation. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I get my prayers. I feel them. I get them. Because it works. Prayer works. Yes, but does. other people, don't. they have to believe in that. And like Pastor said, we got to show an example of the prayer and the, and the kindness that's inside us so we can share that, so we can be the witness. 
So we can just be there for them. And then they can be there for somebody else who's going through the same thing. Amen. So we got to just strengthen our minds and not be afraid no matter what we're going through. Because what we're going through is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So I give it up for him, y'all. And y'all should give it up for him every day of y'all alive. Because Amen. if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be standing here. Pastor wouldn't be here to help us get through these things. All y'all would help each other. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So all I got to say is continue to be the soldiers in Christ, that we're going to do this fight, and we're going to keep on fighting until the battle is over. Amen? Amen. 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 First John chapter 4 verses 11 and 16. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Mm -hmm. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Amen. Amen. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Amen. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's <coughs> dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by yes, our yes, love. Yes, amen. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. And all praise to Christ Jesus, his only Son. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Praise God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise God. They'll know we are Christians by the way we love. Amen. That's a beautiful thing to even think about. That how they'll know that these outside people, people are not saved, will know that we are Christians by the way we love each other. The Bible tells us that consistently. It's a love that we share to others that make us attractive to those who need love. Those who have no hope. Yes. Those who feel that they've been abandoned. They, these people need love. Everything that's going on in the world now, there's somebody out there that can, you can share the gospel with to show them the love of Christ. Yes, yes, yes. You might not be able to solve all their heartfelt needs at the moment, mm -hmm. but we have a message that will secure an insecure soul Amen. that will save them to yes. the uttermost. So 
But we thank God today that we have a message and we have the right kind of food. Yes, we have the right kind of food. So let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 4. And I'm not going to be before you long. Luke chapter 4, Nancy, read up verses 1 through 7. And it's about the temptation of Jesus. We're going to kind of draw from that, and hopefully we will see uh, something that maybe you've never paid attention to before, but it's so obvious. Sometimes something can be so close and so obvious to you that you miss it. You know, I've been in situations where it was right there in front of me or something was told to me that was so obvious and I got so used to it that I missed the beauty of it. So we must continue to search the Bible and mind the scriptures to see what God is trying to tell us. Because everything is not written for us or to us, but everything is good for the soul. Amen. 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 So let's Amen. read. Go ahead, Nancy. Luke 4 and 1. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Luke 4 and 4. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. Hmm. Keep going. Okay. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, to you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. Mm -hmm. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Amen. Remember this, the devil's always looking for an opportune time. Mm -hmm. He ain't done with you yet. Right. Just because you saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost don't mean that he's done with you. As a matter of fact, there's a bullseye on your back. Mm -hmm. But if you notice in this story, I feel this story for everybody. And this was after Jesus is baptized by John. Then it says, well, it's quite interesting. He was led into the wilderness. One, because he was full of the Holy Spirit. And then he was led into wilderness by the fullness of the Holy Spirit that was in him. A lot of us are full of the Holy Spirit and have to understand that sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead you into situations that's less than perfect. Right. I know we blessed but oftentimes when I found out that to strengthen my character of the gift that I bear I re, 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 I, I want to say this I reluctantly let the Holy Spirit lead me in the situations I don't like okay. it may come into the form of dealing with people I don't really like to deal with everybody been there oh, yeah. yes. that we've been we've had to deal with those people that we don't, and, and God, and you're asking God to deliver you, but He said, This is where I want you. Mm -hmm. After being filled with the Holy Spirit, then on top of that, being led into the wilderness, a desolate place, a place where there's no sustenance. <laughs> there's nothing that you can grab by the natural. And it says, For 40 days, the devil tempted him, and he fasted those 40 days. Day in, day out, he didn't eat nothing. And every day, the devil came to try to tempt Jesus. And when he, and when he was done with his 40-day fast, according to 40 days being, the, being a time uh, where you can be chastised by God, uh, the Jewish ritual of chastising was you could take 40 lashes, but the 41st lash was not allowed. We have 
uh, 40 days, 400 years in the wilderness. We have these 40. You had his number 40 or 400. These are times that 40 years in the wilderness. The Jews were led by God. And it was a desolate place, but God took care of them. And Jesus is now our Lord, our Savior, our Messiah, their Messiah, is being led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil as a man. Because you can't tempt a deity. And what he was hoping was that the flesh would be so strong and so deprived and so needy that he would sin. And in the Greek, the word if has four different meanings. It can mean if, maybe, maybe not. It can mean if you want to prove something. It could mean since. But in this one, it's really not the if like we think. Like, okay, if you are the son of God, then turn these stones to bread. The devil knew he was the son of God. So the better rendition is since you are the son of God, turn these breads to stone. Because if there's any doubt, if he didn't or didn't, it would be no big deal. Right. But if he is the son of God and he's been put into this flesh and then that flesh is still weak like our flesh, that flesh still hurt, that flesh still hunger. And he said, oh, I got him now. Mm -hmm. They're weak in their flesh. So I am going to tempt him. With normally what the flesh would need is sustenance and food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So since you are, since you are the son of God, make these bread, turn these stones into bread. And go ahead and eat. <laughs> Fill yourself up. Uh -huh. You've been tempted. God hasn't shown up. You know you're hungry. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know you want to do this. And Jesus didn't say he didn't want to do it, but what Jesus showed us was that his spirit that led him in is stronger than his flesh that could get him out. All right, all right. See, because if he'd have done that, he'd have been, have, you know, it would have messed up everything, but that would have been his way out. I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. Yeah. Take advantage of his power, say, I can, yeah, okay. But see, Jesus said, I do not do anything unless the Father has ordained it for me to do. If the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness, the Holy Spirit had a plan. And I want you to see this too for yourself. When the Holy Spirit leads you into adverse situations, mm -hmm. there is a plan for it. Yeah, amen. Amen. There's something for you to gain from learning and what we learn from Jesus is that since you are the children of God, don't be tempted so quick to satisfy your flesh. Oh, oh, amen. Amen. Right. I had to learn that. Don't be so quick to run to your flesh when you're confronted with the fact that you may, somebody may challenge you, well, you know, you say you saved and sanctified. Why do you do this? And why do you do that? Why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? Don't be so quickly because it may be one of Satan's imps tempting you to act out of character. So he said, why don't you turn these stones to bread? Bread, bread, bread. Jesus said in John 6, 35, go there. He said, for I am the bread of life. 6, 35, read that. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And, so, go ahead. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So we have Jesus saying that I am the bread of life. And then Jesus tells the devil that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Amen. But God is our bread. Yes. God is our sustenance. Mm -hmm. Where he wanted to turn the rocks into bread, we have a relationship with the true bread. All right, all right. The same bread that fed them in the wilderness. That comes down from heaven to feed all. And it says, those who dine on me right. shall never be hungry, Amen. shall never be thirsty. But they're not talking about a natural hunger. We're talking about a spiritual hunger. Right. 
The world is spiritually hungry for a savior and they don't even know it. Amen. They've been in the wilderness so long, they think there's no way out. Wow. They've been thirsty for so long that they need to understand that if you take on Jesus and the salvation that was afforded to you by his death, burial, and resurrection, that you will never be spiritually hungry, you will never wow. be spiritually thirsty, and yeah. you will be satisfied to the utmost. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But you got to go through the temptation. Right? You got to go through the test. Because the natural man will say, I'm hungry, feed me. And the natural man will say, I'm thirsty, give it to me. The woman at the well thought he was talking about natural water. Well, she said, give me this water to drink so I won't thirst no more. But he had to explain to her, the water is not external, it's internal. And the water that I put in you, it says that your belly will be full and that you will spit out and spit out and, and spew out rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. But this only comes if you are a true believer and faithful follower and a believer in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You can't be half full and half empty. Okay. Jesus don't allow just a dab of do. <laughs> Jesus wants to engulf all of you. Amen. He wants to feed you from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. And he wants you to understand that that bread and that water that he gives you, which is the word of God, mm -hmm. is that something that you should be willing to give to other people. Amen. We all in here look good because it looks like nobody in here missed the meat. <laughs> and that's our natural bodies. But even sometimes the saints of God, when they get pressured, mm -hmm. when they're led into that wilderness moment, where there seems like there's no way out, there's no food, there's no water, there's desolation, we don't turn to the bread of life that we can turn to. Mm -hmm. right. Right. It's as near as you realize that you have it. You don't need to get it. It's in you. Uh -huh. The mystery that Paul talked about was the church. Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. And if Jesus Christ is in you and he said he's the bread of life, you are always full. Amen. But what the problem is, it's not your being full. It's you realizing in your mind, in your soul, in your heart that you are full, that even in your worst moment, you can call on God. Amen. When you're being tempted, when you're being tested, when things are not going your way, that's the natural thing. That men go through. We will always go through that. But there's a deeper thing in this. That I want you to see. Because if you're not tested in these things that are natural. You will never realize your spiritual power. That's right. You'll never realize your spiritual power. Look what Jesus was tempted with. We're just going to stick with the bread today. Just look what he's tempted with. He was tempted with a natural urge. But he gave a spiritual answer. <laughs> How many of you. Have ever thought, maybe I need to give a word of God on the circumstance that I'm going through in the moment. Mm. Mm. Now, I'm not talking about using it as a spell book. Mm. I'm talking about using it as the rock to stand on. Come on. Mm. Come on. He said, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, and the word of God is like a two-edged sword that cuts. <laughs> the word of God is like a hammer. The word of God dispels all imaginations. Mm -hmm. And the word of God comforts you in the time of your testing and your trouble. It is your bread. Yeah. Mm. I don't know how you like your bread. <laughs> some like butter. Some like jam. Some like jelly. Some like peanut butter. I like my bread with a little peanut butter on it. Okay. <laughs> when I get real hungry and there's nothing in the cupboard that I really want to eat, I will fall back on what I know is always there. Some peanut butter and some bread. <laughs> and why can I do that? Because it's always there. Yeah. It's not a time where there's no peanut butter in the house. There's not a time where there's no food such as peanut butter in the house. There's always some peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And there's always some bread. And it might be the end of the bread, mm -hmm. but it's the bread. Amen. And for that moment when I'm hungry, it fills me up. So I, I, when I was eating the peanut butter, I said, Lord, 
what are you trying to really, really show me about your bread? He said, my loaf is always to end it. Amen. I said, what do you, what, I'm trying to figure out what you mean by that. Look at the loaf of bread. You got a butt in on this end and a butt in on that end. What do you say? But God. <laughs> That's what's for me. I got but God on one end, I got but God on the other end. And everything in between can still feed me. So even when I'm at the butt, I'm still with God. Right. And I want to encourage you today. Yeah. Think of God as always being there for you because he is. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. He even told you that 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 don't think that he is lack or slow on his wrath, that, that his goodness of being who he is, the bread of life, should lead us to be turned away and repent. Right. It says that because we believe in his blood and we trust in what he's done for us and we have faith in his resurrection, that we are no longer enemies of God, that we have been justified. All of that is what you can lean on when you understand he's the bread of life. Amen. Yes. As I continue to think about this and meditate on his word day and night and hide his word in my heart, do you know that even though I may be physically hungry at any moment, that I can just turn and die on his word? Amen. See, the devil didn't understand because he tricked Adam and Eve. But before he could trick God in the flesh, he had to correct them with the right scripture. See, he used twisted scripture. Jesus said, no, as it is written. And, and when we think as it is written, go to Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 7. Read that. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 7. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. Now, this is the Israelites now. All right, I just want you to pay for this. This is not written to you, but you can get something from this. Go ahead. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, Testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Check it out. So they were led into the wilderness, testing them to know what's in their heart. When you are led into adverse situations, it's just a test to see what's in your heart. Come on. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. We want to know how, how much darkness is left. Mm -hmm. And how much light of the God are you willing to shine in your dark places? If you think that you beyond being led into the situation that exposed your heart, you ain't read your Bible. Amen. As a child of God, you are continually ongoing being tested in the heart category. Mm -hmm. Can you love your enemy? Mm -hmm. Can you give your enemy a cup of water? Are you willing to give your enemy a second chance? Mm -hmm. Do you understand really what's been done for you? Uh -huh. For you to have the bread, you had to believe. For you to believe, you had to be saved. And are you willing to give that which you have abundance of away? Or do you sit and hold it with your pious self? Mm -hmm. Sitting in services, sitting in, 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 in Bible studies, sitting in situations, and you saying, well, look at me. I'm a child of God. Your bread is getting stale. Mm -hmm. Because your bread should be one that is always replenishing, always nourishing, always giving. And that should be a heart thing. So they were led in the wilderness to test how much they love God. Amen. Mm. Amen. And you're being tested the same way. Yes. It's not geographical, but it's circumstances, incidents, and accidents that you go through to test where your heart is. Yeah. When your heart gets troubled. When your heart gets gets get feels lonely, that's a hunger. Mm. When you feel lonely, you want to feel love. That's a hunger. And God is saying, I'm the bread of life, all life, and even the love of your life. So die on me. Amen. I died so you can die on me. Yeah. Right. See, foolish ones, when they were following Jesus, when he had to whittle it down, he told them, yeah, you got to eat in my flesh. They were like, oh no, we're not cannibals. And we didn't follow him no more. He meant spiritual. 
But we understand through the word of God that carnal people cannot understand spiritual things. And neither you should you expect them to. You spend a lot of time trying to get somebody carnal to understand what you understand. You got to remember, you got the bread, but they still eat no crumbs. Mm. And you need to give them what they need by just giving them the gospel. Amen. And don't worry about Amen. if they receive it or not. Okay. Just plant the seed. Yes. And let God decide who's going to bring in the water. Come on. You know, don't you get so caught up in yourself that you want to be gratified by your ability to be able to convey the gospel. You should convey the gospel with humility. And, and I'm going to tell y'all this. Never ever ask anybody to do the sinner's prayer. Thank you for asking me that. This is the reason why. Part of the sinner's prayer says, and it sounds good, but it's revert, revert, reverses the role. The sinner's prayer at some point says, you want to invite God into your heart. Pay attention now. Nancy, let's say I was having a party. And I wanted you to come. If I invite you, who's in control? You are. If you invite yourself, who's in control? I am. So if I invite God to come into my heart, that means I got to allow him. Yeah. And God's telling you an invitation. You need to come. Yes. You need to show up. He invites you to be saved. The old way for the temple in Jerusalem was you needed to go to the temple to experience God. The mystery says Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. You take God to the people. See, when you study a word, you understand the difference. They had to go to Jerusalem. All the Jews, no matter where they were scattered, they're required to go to Jerusalem three times a year to worship God. Where do we have to be to worship God? Anywhere and everywhere. Because that God that they went to go worship at a place is now filling the space inside of us. So when you give somebody the gospel, all you have to do is give them the gospel and ask them what they consider it. And then you can walk away. Because now what you're saying is, it's between you and the Holy Spirit now. Hallelujah. Because you don't have a God-sized hole in your heart. There's no word scripture to say that. Bible scripture says that your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. What you have is a sin problem that permeates your whole body. And the answer is the gospel. Because 116 says, for I'm not ashamed, Romans 116 says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For those who would believe to the Jew first and then to the Greek, to the religious Jew and to the philosophical mind of the Greek. You have the bread, you have the water, you have the answer. And what you need to do is put it on the table and let them think about it. Don't force them to say something that they, that they really don't mean. Right. Right. There are so many people in church that are false converts. <laughs> because they believe that I was led in this prayer and that was it. But you can say the prayer and still not be saved. That's true. That's true. Paul put it this way. Yes. Oh, what a wretched man that I am. Who can save me? But God. but God. We want God to save us. And you contain the bread that you can give them. And it's real simple, but we've made it hard because we want a person to accept Jesus at the moment we give him Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Did you accept Jesus the moment it was given to you? No. 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 Some of us took years, <laughs> decades, yeah. living in sin. Until we got to the point we realized we had no hope. Right. Say it. Say it. And grandma planted that seed long time ago. Right. Sat you on her knee and gave, her, gave you the gospel. And you wiggled off your her lap and looked at her and smiled and kept going. 
Did what you had to do. Live your life. Can't wait till you get grown. And now you get grown and you come to God like a little baby. Mm -hmm. so true. Because somebody planted the seed. Yes. Right. Yes. But I digress. The bread of life. Keep reading Deuteronomy. Verse 3. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone. But man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So did you see the beauty in that? He let them go through that mm -hmm. to test their heart and to humble them. Mm -hmm. You are being led into adverse situations to test your heart and to humble you. To let you know that man does not live by the things of this world, but everything that proceeded from the mouth and the word of God. Y'all yeah, know you need some things. And God said he would provide everything that you need. According to his riches and glory, he owns everything. Yes, he All is. the gold is his. Yeah. <laughs> everything you need is his. Hallelujah. All the food you eat is his. Hallelujah. But he's saying, what I've given you in eternal life is better than what you have that you can see, touch, feel, and smell. Hallelujah. I've given you the essence of who I am. Yes, yes. It dwells in each and every one of you. Yes. You're led into these situations to test your heart, to see how much you want to lean not on to your own understanding, yes. but yes. trust God in everything. Yes. In Philippians, when Nancy talked about it, pray about everything. Mm -hmm. Seek him. Ask him. Look towards him. Yes. Seek the kingdom of God first. All of that is being fueled by the bread of life. Yes. Jesus himself. Because you couldn't seek him without knowing him. Hallelujah. And the Philippians talked about knowing the power of the resurrection. You know Jesus and you can begin to walk in this thing called the power of the res resurrection. So no matter how physically hungry I am, no matter how emotionally deprived I may be, no matter what they say about me, I can walk in this power because the food that I'm living on, the food that's moving me forward is the word of God and the spirit of God that dwells deep within me. And sometimes I have to do it out so it'll come out. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Fasting has a place in the church. Fasting has a place. Individually, you need to fast. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not only for your health benefits, but for your spiritual health benefits. Yes. It's not going to hurt you to eat at 6 o'clock tonight and don't eat again until 6 o'clock tomorrow. That's true. Mm -hmm. so true. It ain't going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. so I know you think it will. Mm -hmm. And so those of you who have diabetes, I know, do what you need to do. So don't think those here past ain't give you no medical advice, but this is what I'm telling you. When you deprive yourself of food, the thing that you your body needs, you can, you can start asking God to show you things. Yeah. Show me this word. Show me this scripture. Yeah. So, so, so fasting has become part of a regular regiment for me. Mm -hmm. I may be asking, what you eating tonight? Nothing. It's not that I don't want to, but I'm asking God to show me something he can only show me through fasting. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus, like he said, he led them into the wilderness. God led them to the wilderness and gave them manna. He said that their fathers, did, they didn't know, and their fathers didn't know. There is something that you could be led into in fasting that you'll never, ever get unless you go into it. And it could be a scripture you didn't read all your life. So when I looked at this one verse, it just kept glaring at me, glaring at me, glaring at me. And it just told me this. It told me, son, tell the people to hold on. A little while longer. Yes. Hold on. Yes, Lord. Trust in him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Believe in him. Mm. I know you going through. Yeah. I put you in that. Mm -hmm. Why? One, because I want to test your heart. And I want to see how humble you are when you're going through. Mm -hmm. I may not deliver you today or tomorrow, but trust me, you will come out like refined gold because the fire that bakes the bread it gets rid of the dross of what you don't need and makes what you do need purified. Yes, yes, yes. So let the word burn in your hearts. Hallelujah. And let it be shut up in your bones Hallelujah. to purify you. Amen. 
and, 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 and burn away everything that's needed. So nothing but the bread of life and the word of God and the spirit of God is left and start dining on it. Eat little bits by little bits. Don't be greedy. Take off a big chunk because you can't eat a big chunk of bread. You got to nibble on it because the bread is so, so good. And you eat so fast, you'll make yourself sick. But you know, when you start dining on the bread of life, the word of God, and understanding that you walk in the power of resurrection, you begin to change. Can't nobody shake you or bother you. Yeah. Can't nobody take you off your square. Can't nobody affect you and infect you with their poison of the world. They can't even come to you. They come to you, and you don't even have to say that. You said, look like you've been with God, and they be like, let me leave you alone. <laughs> Because you've been dining on the bread. They, you, they sit at the restaurant filling their bellies and you just sit there drinking some water. And they looking at you like, what's wrong with you? But you look healthy. Yeah, I'm dining on the word of God. I'm listening to y'all. Y'all can eat steak. I'm going to eat this word right quick. It's just as good. Matter of fact, it's better than the steak before you. Maybe I can convince y'all. Y'all go eat because I got a word for you when I get done. Amen. So I just want to encourage you today. I just really want to encourage all of y'all today. Yes. Spend some time with the bread of life. Yes. Spend some time with the manna that your parents didn't know and your parents before them didn't know. Meaning that God has some fresh manna for you. Amen. And all you got to do is get in the position of being in trouble and trusting God. Yes. And you'll see some things. And let me tell you, when you get into trouble, fast for a couple of hours. No television, just you and the word of God. No no, no, no music in the background. Let God make his own music in your heart. You know, I know music sets the mood, but sometimes I want to tell you, let God set the mood without the music. Can he set the mood without the music? Isn't his word music enough in your heart for you sometimes? See, sometimes I just get to praising God because of the word that I see. When I see that he is the bread of life, I say, Lord, you mean I ain't never got to go hungry again? He said, no, you don't. No, you don't. You ain't never got to go home. So, I'll, again, I want to challenge you today. Spend some time dining on the bread of life, and I guarantee you, you'll never be thirsty again. You'll never be hungry again. And you'll never, ever find a food that will replace the word of God. Let's pray. Oh, Grace Heavenly Father, I just thank you today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the people. And Lord, we'll continue on in the temptation of Jesus, trying to learn how we can benefit from it. So Lord, let us meditate on what we've read this so far. And let us realize sometimes you lead us in only to show out and get us out. But Lord, it don't be only come out when we trust you. You burn away everything and let us down on this bread. And on each end of the bread, no matter which way we turn it, but God, you are there for us. So Lord, watch over us and keep us give us a better understanding of the word. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for tuning in to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN network. Come join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for Sunday worship. Bible study is held on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are located at 3006 North Lindbergh Boulevard, Suite 711, St. Louis, Missouri, 63074. All are welcome and we look forward to seeing you soon.